All right, let's take a look at AP Classroom free response question. This is set B, question one. So the no calculator question. Let's look at some area, volume, cross sections. Alrighty, let's take a look at this piecewise function. Let f be this function defined piecewise. From x equals 0 to 1, I've got this upside down parabola shifted up to, I'm going to use that function from x equals 0 to 1. And then the next piece of that function is a parabola shifted to the right to, opening up. Okay, let r be the region in the first quadrant bound by that graph and the x and y axes. First, we want to find the area of that region. I think I have space up here to show my work. Find the area of that region. Notice since it's defined piecewise, I'm actually going to use two integrals. So the first integral, let's jot down an expression for the area using integrals. From 0 to 1, I will use that first piece. 2 minus x squared dx plus, and I'll use that second piece on the interval from 1 to 2. I'm going to use a function x minus 2 squared dx. Let those integrals represent the area. The heights are the function values, remember? The heights of my rectangles are my function values, and there's the widths getting infinitely small, uh, that differential in x. Alrighty. This is a three-point problem. And you get one point for those integrals, plus one for correctly stating those integrals. Let's continue. This will equal, I'm going to take the antiderivative to evaluate those definite integrals, which will be 2x minus 1 third x cubed evaluated from 0 to 1. And I'm going to combine that with, take the antiderivative for that second integral. Uh, I don't think I have to FOIL that out. I want to get rid of that. I'll be a 1 third because my chain rule, the derivative of the inner function will just be 1. So I think I'm okay to use that power rule in reverse. Evaluated from 1 to 2. And you get 1 point for your correct anti, oopsies derivatives. And you're going to get one point for the correct answer. Alrighty. What will that be? 2 times 1, using that upper limit first, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 third. I'm going to show my work here. Minus, plug in my sec, uh, lower limit of integration, 0 minus 0. And I'm going to combine that with Evaluating that next will be 1 third, 2 minus 2, which is 0, cubed, minus, plug in that lower limit, what is that? 1 third, negative 1 to the third. If I combine all of that, I get 2 minus 1 third, that was 0, that was 0, plus 1 third area bound under that curve is 2, and you get a point for that correct answer. Next part of this question, worth two points. Region R is the base of a solid. Imagine that as the base, that's curved, curved region there. For this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is going to be a square. Right, but we don't need to evaluate an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the volume of this solid. So you have to imagine all of those squares standing up. Okay, so now the volume will be 
again, I've got those two different functions. So I'm going to take the integral from 0 to 1. Now watch this. I want the areas of all these squares. And if I add the areas of all of these squares, each one has an area of 2 minus x squared squared, base times height, base times height, since it's a square, dx. And I add that to the integral. And I'm going to add up all of these squares, which have an area of x minus 2 squared squared. And there we go. And I can add up all of those infinitely narrow squares to get the volume and combine those two volumes. And where did we get our two points here? You got a point for the correct integrands, what you put inside your integrals, and then you got one point for that expression for the total volume. Alrighty, and take a look at that. Last part of this question is a walloping four points. Now we're going to start spinning. The portion of this region from x equals 1 to 2, so now we're just looking at this portion, we're going to take that thing, is revolved around the y-axis to form a solid and find the volume of this solid. Make sure you're revolving around the y-axis. I'm going to try to draw that thing revolved around the y-axis. So imagine if I take that sliver and I rotate this around the y-axis. And we want the volume of that solid. Notice this smaller circle larger circle, and we do get these washers We're revolving around the y-axis. So I'm going to use that inner function, which is easy. That's just 1. But this outer function, notice, what was that? That was y equals x minus 2 squared. I want to solve for x so I can get this expression in terms of y. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square root of y is equal to x minus 2. Bring that 2 over and x equals root y plus 2 is an expression for that outer function. Alrighty, so now volume, let's give ourselves some space here equals, remember, uh, pi r squared minus pi r squared for washers. Factor out the pi, which is a constant. Y values that I'm using, my limits of integration, go from 0 to 1 on the y-axis. 0 to 1 on the y-axis. Here's my pi r squared minus pi r squared. So my outer radius squared is that root y plus 2 squared minus that inner function squared, which is simply 1 squared. And that's that with respect to y. Okay, I'm going to simplify that a bit, which becomes pi from 0 to 1. I'm going to FOIL this first expression. If I FOIL that first expression, I get y plus 4, square root of y, which I'm going to write as y to the 1 half, plus 4 minus 1, with respect to y. Combine some like terms there, and I'll show you where you get your points. Pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of y plus 4y to the 1 half plus 3, dy. Let's see if we earned any points here yet. We got one point for this combined correct, the pi, that constant, and your limits of integration with respect to y. You got one point for the correct integrand, that inner thing. There we go. 
and we're going to get one point for the antiderivative. So it'll be pi times, let's take the antiderivative. So there's another point for my antiderivative, and now I have to plug in upper limit of integration 1 minus what I get when I plug in lower of integration 0. Got that pi out front. What's that going to be? 1 half plus 8 thirds plus 3 minus 0. Take your time and combine those things. I got a common denominator and combined, and I was left with 37 sixths pi for the volume of that solid. Very nice. All right, thanks for working through. Take care.